farewell to La Bagnetha. Uh, 24 and a half k's today up to Astorga, which will be interesting, rejoining the Francis. Or joining it, not rejoining it. La Bagnetha was good. This is the uh, Plaza Mayor. A couple of bars and things, and then down this little side street it was interesting. There was half a dozen little bars, so... We had a rather late evening with a few beers and tapas. But nice to unwind after a hard day's walking. So now, I think there's a cafe open around the corner for breakfast. Just looking back on La Bagnetta and the uh, sun's up, it's about 7.45. And we're gonna go across an old railway bridge. Thought I'd just show you that for a couple of minutes. We're going over a river. It's a lovely part of the day, this. Nice and cool, the birds are singing. The sound of running water. I'm not sure there must be a little waterfall the other side. Just see if there's any fish. Let's go and look at the other side. Oh, yeah. That's why it was making a bit of noise. It's running a bit quicker there. Just looking back to the town. And this is the way that we go. Lots of arrows around here. Of course, we're in Castilla y Leon now. Well, it's a, always a tongue twister saying that. Castilla y Leon. Um, so they, uh, <coughs> they're pretty good at the markings. And I think the track goes off. I just looked at Granza a few minutes ago. <coughs> it's good to just check it now and again so you know what's coming up I know that the track was going to go off to the left and sort of follow the river a bit I think this looks like the right way I'm stumbling around a bit here because I can't use my poles as I'm holding the camera gee legs are a bit stiff this morning I'll warm up in another half hour or so another old railway bridge and then I think we go this way. <coughs> I'll put the camera down in a minute and check. Bronza. I'm pretty sure it's this way. Want to join me getting lost? Let's have a look. I don't see any arrows, so um, <coughs> I'm pretty sure this is the way. But I'll stop filming and just check Bronza to be doubly sure. Because. <coughs> I don't think it was that way. I think it was definitely going to be left. All right, talk soon. You know, on this particular route, I obviously don't walk west very often. <laughs> I mean, obviously the Camino heads north from Sevilla up to Astorga. Um, but, you know, it changes direction here and there. And the reason I said that is, I th this is the first time I can recall walking with my shadow in front of me which of course happens all the time along the Camino Francis. I don't recall it, noticing it really here. And those mountains again. The mountains are calling. I don't, I don't know, I love mountains. I don't know if I'm going to enjoy walking up and down them though. Um, having walked up and down from Fonsevedon a couple of times. Oh, I was looking at accommodation. I could not believe the number of places now in Fonsebedon that you can stay. Uh, last time I was there was probably 2018. I think there was three, maybe four places, albergos and stuff. There seemed to be a list of 10, which, and I was just thinking, you know, if I get to Rabanal, I want to I try and get into a Donativo there that I've heard a lot about. 
if I, I was thinking if I don't get in maybe I'll continue on to rub an aisle but I don't think I will because there's probably going to be like 100 plus people staying up there and the benefit for me in staying in, in um, Fonsa Bidon, sorry, uh, the benefit I see in that is that you can get up really early to go up to the cruise the Pharaoh and be up there at dawn. <clears throat> but if there's 10 places to stay, there's likely to be 100 people up there at dawn. So uh, I think I'll probably stick to plan A and stay in Rabanal and just take my time going up there and maybe get up there mid morning or something. Probably be less people. All right, let's get on with it. I don't know that you'll be able to see these, but there's dozens of rabbits in amongst that sandy area. Let's zoom in a bit. See if I can spot some. There's one just at the bottom of the screen. <coughs> They've got burrows there, I think. Yeah, they're in and out of the burrows. There's a little baby one. Just there. This is a lovely stretch. This is about um, eight kilometers from La Bagnetta. <clears throat> I just had a couple of stops already. <clears throat> the reason being, I have got thus far without any injuries. I have been so lucky, I've been blessed. You know, no blisters, no tendon problems, you know, torn meniscus, all that stuff has been okay. And then suddenly today, my knees are killing me. I don't know why. So, uh, you know, it's this whole listen to your body thing. So I'm trying to work out what's different today. They were fine yesterday. <clears throat> and I thought, okay, maybe, you know, it's a bit like uh, fault finding on your car. I thought, let's have lots to drink. Maybe it's dehydration. So I've done that. That didn't work. Uh, lack of salts and electrolytes <clears throat> so I had a couple of salt tablets and drank that no, that hasn't helped uh, I got my foam roller out because it's just sort of on the inside of the knee and below the knee and I thought oh, maybe it's kind of shin splints or something like that so I had to go on the roller no, <laughs> that hasn't helped much uh, and so finally I popped a painkiller and anti-inflammatory I'm kind of reluctant to, to use them because it masks the pain and you know you could actually be doing damage without realizing it um, but I'm not sure what it is it's in a weird position so I was planning uh, my next rest day to be Ponferrada but given my knees are complaining I think I might have a rest day in Astorga. I'm, <clears throat> I'm sort of three days ahead of my plan anyway. Because um, if, if I wake up tomorrow and these are painful, it's going to be hard getting up over Fonsabidon and down to Molinaseca. Um, so I think it might make sense to give the knees a day off. And I'm sure that's all it needs. Uh, there was a, a section towards the end of yesterday which was, it was almost like walking across a ploughed field <clears throat> and it was, you know, twisting the feet and all that. I think it could have been that. Maybe it um, just put a bit of strain on the knees or something. But, you know, you got to listen to your body. And if the knees want to have a day off in Astorga, well, it kind of makes sense. I might be able to find a physio there too. That would be good. I haven't... <clears throat> seen a physio this trip uh, you know 700 k's plodding along it's good to go and see a physio if you can and just get the muscles loosened up and get the knots out and I've got knots in the shoulders and all sorts of places so that could be a good thing to do on a day off as well and we've got a bit of a junction but I looked at Granza a short time ago or should I say the Gronza track 
that I look at on Maps Me, and it looks to be pretty much straight ahead through these woods, so that should be fine. Those rabbits that I <coughs> took a video of a short time ago, there must have been hundreds of them in all that sandy area. There were hundreds of burrows, and they were popping their heads up and running around. They must breed like rabbits there, I reckon. All right, let's get underway and see if I can. The other thing I find is if you get sort of muscle strains and tendon strains and things like that, try not to limp. That's my philosophy anyway, <clears throat> because if you limp, you change your gait and you're putting different muscles under strain. Uh, so you can actually make things worse. And yeah, that's not a medical opinion, it's just what I've found. So that's where the poles help. And I try to walk, you know, properly and upright without limping. So I shall stop filming so that I can use my poles. And I had a message from my two Camino Amigos. They're in the village back there somewhere, but I left a bit earlier than them today. It's nice to be kind of out in front and not trailing along behind someone else. This is very pleasant. It was supposed to get hot this afternoon, but I hope it stays like this because this is perfect weather. I don't know what the temperature is, but being a little bit overcast, I guess it's 15, 16. Very, very pleasant. All right, let's get on with the walk. And we'll see how the knees survive getting to Astorga. I'm not even halfway there yet. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's going to be a long day. <laughs> I was just looking at... Uh, I, I use a, an app called, Ma, um, what is it, Map My Walk, um, <clears throat> and I turn that on when I start in the morning and turn it off when I finish at night, and it's just a, a handy little guide, you know, I can glance at it and it tells me how far I've walked, so, you know, the last time I looked, I walked 9Ks or something like that, so I know, okay, I've got 15 to go, but it also maps your current speed and average speed. Um, and I notice it's a lot slower than yesterday, so <clears throat> that's because I'm really slowed down with my bloody knees. All right, let's put the camera away. Talk to you soon. There's my two Camino amigos catching me up. <clears throat> I'm walking a little bit slower today, so I figured they would catch me within a couple of hours, and I was right. Interesting, these tracks, as we get closer to Astorga, probably about 15 k's to go, <clears throat> you know, the colour of the earth and all the rest of it, it's just like uh, the Camino Francis east of Astorga. You know, so it's, it's kind of the Astorga geology, I suppose, isn't it? Onwards, at least the track's better conditioned now. <clears throat> my painkillers have kicked in either that or <laughs> the other things I tried are working but I suspect it's the painkillers so it's eased the pain in the knees a little bit definitely see if I can <clears throat> see a physio in Astorga well, let's get on with it so I'm not sure how far we are about halfway to Astorga and the mystery is slowly being revealed about those mountains <clears throat> so those mountains that we've been looking at for three days with a little bit of snow on top, I reckon that's up around Fonsabidon. Could even be the ones to the left with the kind of big fire trails or something. But it's kind of that area. It's the right direction. All right, let's continue on. So I'm just looking at those <coughs> peaks again. And it's, I mean, it's five years since I've walked to the Francis, but I think that Fonsabidon and the Cruz de Ferro is <clears throat> those little peaks just above that sand pile. So I'll, I'll zoom in, it'll be very shaky, but up there, let me zoom back out again. <clears throat> it looks like it's got two sort of fire trails or something running, I'm pretty sure that is. 
because you're going from the cruiser ferry, you go down a bit, you come back up a bit, you got Manhood Inn. Uh, so it's not the ones just to the right of the tree where the snow is. I'm pretty sure it's that little double peak above the sand pile. We shall see. Could even be the one to the left. We'll find out tomorrow. Our first glance of Astorga. It's been quite a long day all around. Here it is. About three and a half k's to go. Oh, it'd be nice to get this section done with. And in fact, this marks the end of the VDLP. Oh, just been huffing and puffing up a hill there. This must be two k's to go. And I presume that is Gaudi's Palace with the two spires there. Should be there in half an hour.